This pottery factory has survived six decades of war and conflict. At one point, there were nearly 40 workshops like this one in the Gaza Strip. But now, only a handful are left. But, owner Sabri Atalla says, Israeli airstrikes in May were the worst he's ever lived through. But the Atalla family is determined to save the art they have practiced for three generations. We went to Gaza to see how this business is still standing. The dry soil they use as a base comes from the eastern parts of Gaza. It turns into mud in the wash tub, where workers mix it with water. Then they filter it to get rid of impurities like small rocks. It takes about two days of drying for the soup of water and mud to turn into clay. <laughs> The machine smooths and molds the clay into chunks. The Atalla family runs two factories next to each other. Sabri's shop is the largest and has been around since the 1960s. Sabri's nephew, Mustafa Muhammad Atalla, learned the craft when he was eight years old. Today, he helps his father run their own shop next to Sabri's. He's making a clay pot called Kedra. It's used to cook a Palestinian dish of meat and rice, also called Kedra, that's popular during Ramadan and holidays like Eid al-Adha. And that's the busiest time for the business. But this Ramadan was different. Gaza and neighboring Israel traded deadly rocket fire and devastating airstrikes in early May. Hundreds of people were killed in Gaza and 13 in Israel. The latest chapter in a long history of occupation and war. Sabri was forced to close up shop. While shelling was still going on outside, Sabri's sons came to salvage the inventory they had prepared to sell during Ramadan. By the end of the 11-day war, more than 450 buildings were damaged or destroyed in an area roughly the size of Detroit. No one in Sabri's family died this time, but he says he lost a quarter of his inventory because of the vibrations from nearby explosions. He restarted production shortly after the ceasefire. But the holiday of Eid al-Adha was just two months away in July, so Sabri couldn't afford to take a break. His father taught him the craft when he opened the store in the 1960s. Today, Sabri designs the artwork himself. I'm 
انه كشف انه الوضع الماء في داخل الفخار يعيد حيويه الماء الى طبيعتها الاصليه كما طلعت من بطن الارض. Smaller terracotta pots meant for salad are another best seller during this time. Before the Israeli blockade, Sabri used to sell 300 of these pots every day. Now he can't even sell that in one year. Everything changed when Hamas won the election in 2006. Israel and Egypt consider it a terrorist group and put strict rules in place limiting what goods could come in and out of Gaza. Israel says the blockade is necessary for security reasons, but Palestinians say it amounts to collective punishment of everyone in Gaza. Sabri's business plummeted. In a place where nearly 60% of people live in poverty, traditional handmade ceramic ware just can't compete with cheap metal pots and plastic bowls. He's had to let go of all of his employees. Now he keeps things going with just his family. To cut costs, he fires the clay in wood-powered furnaces. فإذا كان إحنا حرقنا في هذه في هذه المادة إحنا حرقنا يعني بالكهرباء أو في الغاز أو الصرف مكلف علينا يعني بيقدر يكلفنا مبالغ طاهلة ما بنقدر نحطه على المستهلك الكلي. But this ancient technique produces a lot of smoke, and neighbors have been complaining. كنا نبين عليهم إنه هذا فيه دخان وفي بخاخير وفي وفي بل سكنوا جبنا ليش أخذوها بطراب المصاري الأرض عشان جنب الفخورة. In early 2021, the municipality made it illegal to run the kiln. Still, he's determined not to give up until the next generation of Atallas can take over. I love this, I love this, this is the art of the Bukhar. I mean, as a result of my life, or my son, or something that's bad for me. And his nephew Mustafa feels the same way. I learned my father. The father taught me and I'm going to teach my children. I'm going to teach my children.